코 자체도 4대3으로 너무 아쉬웠고 경기 내용도 충분히 제가 이길 수 있었는데 좀 제가 너무 못해서 져가지고 특히 2세트의 경우는 지면 안 됐는데 그거 졌거든요 4대0으로 이길 수도 있었는데 이제 제가 너무 실수를 많이 해서 너무 화도 나고 정말 너무 아쉬웠어요 지금도 엄청 아쉬워하고 있네요 네 계속 계속 생각나더라고요 그냥 항상 똑같이 어, 열심히 하고 있는데 좀 마인드를 좀 바꿔서 어, 좀 뭔가 자신감 있게 좀 이번 시즌을 해보려고 해요 네. 최근 에는 16강을 아예 가보지 못했기 때문에 뭐, 저 어떻게 다른 사람들한테는 모르겠지만 저한테는 일단 16강도 아직은 큰 산이기 때문에 16강을 일단은 노리고 다른 뭐 목표를 잡던지 생각을 해야 될것 같아요. 네. 성우가 잘해서 진건 아닌 것 같아요. 진건 아닌 것 같아요. 제가 못해서. <웃음> 잘한 이유가 있다는 거예요. 성우가 잘해서 진게 아니라 제가 못해가지고. 뭐 아쉽기는 했는데요. 뭐. 해강에서 져가지고 중국, 중국 대회 나가서 우승한 것도 있어서 그냥 쌤쌤이라고 치고 뭐 실력으로 잡다기보다는 좀 충분히 이길만한 사이즈였는데 제가 약간 못해가지고 진 거여가지고 그런 점은 좀막 크게 아쉽진 않고요 시즌3 노래야죠 너무 옛날이긴 한데 어, 그때 WCS가 이제 나오고 처음에 이제 한국 국가대표 선발전에서 우승하고 저는 좀 개인적으로 그때 자신감을 많이 얻었다고 생각해요. 그래서 뭔가 지금도 좀한 번만 좀 자신감을 얻을 수 있는 계기만 생기면 어, 그래도 좀잘할수 있을 거라 생각하거든요. 그래서 그런 상황이 어, 나올 수 있으면 좋겠습니다. 테란으로 이렇게 성적을 못 내고 있었는데 제 이제 인생의 전환점이 프로토스로 바꾸고 나서 바로 굉장히 잘 됐거든요. 그래서 저의 인생에서는 그 공적 바꾼 게 정말 신의 한 수였던 것 같아요. 뭐 하락세 얘기하라는 거예요? 아니면 상승세 아, 얘기하라는 거예요? 하고 싶은 거예요? 하고 싶은 하고 싶은 거예요. 거예요. 음... 뭐 상, 상금 랭킹 2등이라서 뭐. 제가 못해본 게 이제 월드 챔피언십 우승이랑 블리츠턴 우승을 못해봐서 세계대회 우승이 정말 하고 싶어서 그래서 작년에 그 기회가 왔거든요 IM 월드 챔피언십 결승까지 갔는데 거기서 준우승을 해가지고 IM 월드 챔피언십 우승을 했으면 어땠을까 지금 뭐 그런 생각은 많이 안 해봤지만 어, 어, 한다고 하면 은 아무, 아무래도 어, 성주 성주에 그런 뭐 가볍게 GS에 우승하는 그런 걸 하고 싶지 않나 저도. 2019 Mountain Dew GSL Season 3 Code S Reversal. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's Creator versus Keen to decide who goes on to the round of 16. That's right. In a That's right. group that also has uh, classic and innovation. You nailed it. I just want to That's make sure reality. that this isn't a simulation. It's probably a simulation still. Okay. But That's not, good the, not the one you're thinking of. So this is just where we're at right now. Yeah. Um, what a what a, a twist and what I thought was going to be a basic bro GSL day. Who's supposed to win this? I actually don't know. I think Keen 
but maybe there's going to be an upset even among the two guys that made the upsets. Yeah. Because I think Keen, at least in my experience of casting him and watching him, he's looked better than Creator. He's looked better years. than Creator, yeah. Years. Maybe maybe it's Creator. Maybe I figured the trend out. I don't know. Uh, King's Cove will be our first map. Keen versus Creator. The winner goes on to the round of 16. Let's do this. Afrika S2, Keen. Jin Air Green Wings, Creator. So we had both of these players cause big upsets in mirror matchups. Now we'll get to see what uh, a PBT with these two looks like. Yeah. And by the way, the way that they won, it was not a cheeky, cheesy move. There was no, no quick rushes. There was not even any major uh, catastrophes that started out early on. I know the innovation kind of messed up once with his Ravens, but I mean, it went into a super late game. There was definitely windows of time where innovation might have been able to come back. So this, uh, even if it's not a fast, action-packed game, should be a very good PVT. I would say so. They're both looking strong. They both outplayed two of the best. Like, I think you have to rate both those guys within top three of their races for years. For yep. years. So, I mean, let's see. It's, like, I, I Keen is a guy that I'm always ready uh, to su have surprise everyone because he's just, he's a better player than his results really show, I think. Whereas Creator, you know, I guess, more lately, he has he has gotten better, like we mentioned before, but not for as long as Keen. So definitely, kind of expecting him. If you look at the the maps that we have, most most of the vetoes nowadays are going towards having both Kings Cove and Thunderbird uh, being played, and they're kind of the more macro esque maps, and they're both here. So you know, it, when when I look at that, a lot of uh, Protoss players are more comfortable than Terran players getting into those later parts of that matchup, but uh, Terrans have gotten a lot better at it, so I'm not sure exactly how to figure out who's supposed to win this. It's just everything is a kind of a surprise today. I'm trying to back off of my usual expectations with these two now that I've seen how well they played. Really? Especially Keen and, and just... You, you were pretty straightforward saying that most people consider Classic, a better player than Creator. So, I mean, I feel like you'd have a strong opinion here as well. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know what to say, though. I Honestly, I, I mean, especially, for instance, with Keen, to see late game that good against one of the top three Terrans of all time is, is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, usually, the very, very, very best in the world, the most storied, um, you know, players with the most trophies, if you want to put it one way, uh, usually... Their late game is where they exhibit why they cannot lose, why sure. players are more inclined to cheese them, why uh, you know a, a game where they have more tools at their disposal, they simply put become much more of a threat. Uh, the fact that Keen played that beautifully and that patiently, and then when it came down to one of the most difficult things to execute in StarCraft II, which was trying to get everything in that position with the battle cruisers warping in the vikings in the right spread ravens coming into play yamato's going down uh he did it like perfectly shows what kind of condition he's in yeah i will say i think classic had a little bit more blunders against creator but you know we've had plenty of games for creator and it, it, you can go back in the vod and check guys we were talking about this and it's not untrue but creator definitely had some games where he sort of had a lead and couldn't close the games out. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, a, a historical some. fact. So sure. um, to see Creator also just handle it with such grace is so cool. Mm -hmm. I love seeing players who've played for a long time uh, and maybe haven't succeeded, you know, or in the background, in the shadows of the other pros, and then their moment comes. Yeah. That's so cool. Because people gel with things they're trying to get better at different times in their lives. You Absolutely. Know? Everyone learns at their own rate. And yeah. that doesn't mean that someone is always going to be better than someone else, even if they learn a lot quicker, become a champion mm -hmm. right away. Like some, sometimes over time, you know, that's, that's how it goes. So 
just because someone was dominating, let's say, in the first three or four seasons of GSL, a lot of those players, if not all of them, are not here in the same capacity, right? Yeah. Um, and a lot of them had to fade out because other players caught on. But I do like the story of a game that's as old as StarCraft II, someone who's been grinding the whole time, it starts to click. It starts to happen. Or what about starts to click again? Sure. Because yeah. both of these guys had higher rankings way back. Both of them. Very true. Right? Keen wasn't quite as good as Creator back then, but, you know, he was he was a legitimate, legitimate Terran, whereas, well, now he still kind of is. Like, he makes it into GSL, but it's very rare that he gets around to 16. He's right. He's done it, like, once in the past three years. By the way, the three Oracles are coming up. We're probably going to have our first engagement here. It appears that Keen is ready. There's also three Adepts. Uh, it looks like they may be planning on shading in. At least he's flirting with the idea of doing something here. I like that Stasis Ward. Yeah. People used to put it down right where the command center is. But this is, oh wait, that is right where the command center is. Yeah, so I thought it was up a little bit so it would catch SCVs that come out in a clump. But never mind. I like, I like possible. the idea of what you're talking about, though, Artosis. Yeah. Either way, there are a ridiculous amount of Stasis Wards on the map. And we saw someone else do this the other day, which was... I'm always interested in plays like this because the Stasis War got severely nerfed, right? It runs out now. <laughs> so, yeah. like, before, I I was like, okay, this is going to be the most broken thing in the whole game. And it started to get very good, and then it just kind of, you know, now that it's timed, it's like when your opponent goes fast three command centers, is it worth using all your Oracle energy oh. putting these down right now? We have the Adepts shaded into the uh, natural here. It looks like they're going to kill about five uh, SCVs. Now, where are the oracles on the minimap? I'm having a hard time. I think they're in the bottom center. Yeah, they're there. Ah, uh, okay. Now, he still has the map with plenty of traps here, plenty of pitfalls for the Terran to fall into. Mm -hmm. And There's an immortal walking across the map. Yeah, is that a mistake? That or? has to be a bad rally because of where the War Prism is. Unless he has only two Zealots inside that, um, and then he picks the immortal up. No, I think, I think uh, that the was just a... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that thing. So he's going to send that back. Uh, there was a war prism. Oh, what? Sorry, it still is over here, uh, and it's going to be used to try to do some warp ins. Is Creator going to try to attack with this? Because if he sends the warp in alone without anything, I think it just, unless he gets a good recall, I think it just won't do that much. It'll do a little bit of damage. He'll trade in some zealots, and then it yeah, will get shot down. I'm worried too because you can always try to oh, come over here with the raven. He's moving in down. exactly as Keen is moving out. So whether it's good luck or just awareness of timings, uh, this. This is reasonable right here, right? Look at Keen turn around. Anytime you fly in a prism and like force lost mining time, maybe kill a couple of SCVs and force the army to turn around, what a gigantic advantage that is. Okay, you know what? He did not lose anything but a Zealot. Yeah. Always worth it, especially, not even just to get the SCVs, but to control your opponent's movement patterns. The amount of time that he's bought himself here. And Thermal Lance will be done before they clash. He has more Robo units. Mm -hmm. He has uh, another warp in round or two. Now he's getting this 6 o'clock base over here uh, as this is happening as well. Now Kina is, seems intent on trying to move out once more. And that is tagged by the Oracles here. Yeah, that's a very good tag, seeing most of the Widow Mines there as well. He's going to see the army movement. Uh, where's Creator's army? That can't be it right there. He has that more than that. Uh, he should. I think there's more regrouping here from the natural. Only one Colossus? Okay, there's Two a second Colossi. one. But, I mean, he has disables for both. Yeah, and it wasn't like the uh, Protoss was able to come out and bait out the disables and then run back. Oh, he has a high Templar, so he's going for the feedback. A beautiful move here. Oh! oh! Time for Keen to turn around. Yeah. This is not happening right now, Keen. Creator is playing the games of his life right yeah. now. Great move there. You don't see that enough, but that is... It, and, do you know why he could do that? It's because of that warp prism. It bought him yeah. so much time. And look at this. I think this is even a mistake here by uh, Keen to leave those widow mines there. It's easily taken out as well. A drop comes in here, but with three oracles, everything on the ground will be sprayed down. Yeah. No problem. Meanwhile, the fourth base an attack over here. Great move here to take out the fourth base. It seems like those widow mines may have been there to uh, buy some time for the drop on the natural, and then he hit the fourth. So when you put all those things together, very worthwhile. So, uh, Keen still holding his own here, doing a good job. I think especially denying that fourth Nexus was quite important. Keen's taking the command center uh, in the sweet spot, the easy spot to usually hold here against any kind of Protoss push. And we'll see if uh, Creator has the opportunity to come back and hit that again. Meanwhile, Keen once more with another drop over here at the natural, and I believe he's actually barreling towards the main as well. 
They're going to have to pick up there as the Oracles come back. Does oh, get those feedbacks done. off. So kind of cool right there. Size Storm is not finished yet. Does this end up? Yeah, does this end up becoming an overextension here? Yeah, Keen is not really finding that much damage. Like he's, yeah. he's working really hard for it, but it's not really materializing. You right? can really put some emphasis on what it's like when you don't have uh, medevac heal mm -hmm. there because the feedbacks, the energy is all gone. I mean, the army is actually just a much oh. more manageable thing. Where otherwise the Protoss is trying to make sure that you have enough at the right time, otherwise you actually lose the fight. In this case, an A-click will allow you to eventually come out on top. You know, Does Ooh. towards the end of this, this actually worked out. He just he <laughs> just got that prism and it still had an immortal in it. He got 13 probes, he snapped up a Colossus. Yeah. He, he sniped the fourth again, and during all this, he's taking his own fourth. So like this like it was defended pretty well overall by Creator, but Keen kept it up. His multitasking there was really phenomenal. We need to see what happens now that everything has basically been held off. You tell me this medevac's gonna die. Okay. Now that things have basically been held off, does Terran actually have enough to defend? One thing about an attack like that is that you're trading off a lot of your own units and your medevacs mm -hmm. to try to kill key tech structures, kill workers, kill Nexi. And so maybe Creator can actually flip this on its head and take this disadvantage and put it into an advantage. Ouch. Yeah. I ouch. said that as the oracles are going down. <laughs> I was happy with my statement, but let's see, though, for real. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, his, his army is pretty decent here. Where is that all the splash, though? Okay, two High Templars, one Colossus. Doesn't feel like it's really enough. I'm sure he has a good amount of uh, Zealots, and he has 2-2. Two, two. Akeen has 2-2 two, two as well. He's really kept up with those upgrades. Way to try to come out here again. Yeah, he can't. He can't engage that right now. It's funny how the planetary can make it so much harder to actually get close to that. <laughs> Nicely done, disabling oh, that. Whoa! My God. Keen, that play. like the perfect plays, two in a row there. Oh. The Colossi go down. The infantry are going to decimate the remaining Protoss army here, especially as reinforcements come in. And one stray immortal. Oh, almost picked up. Wow. Just awesome, awesome play there by Keen. And obviously, he will clean up this entire army. That, like, losing that entire army, I don't think that there's much of a chance here for Creator. Yeah. Good idea to go into Disruptor, definitely. I have to hand that to him, yeah. but... It uh, presented itself as a bit of an afterthought, as the whole army was gone, and there was one Disruptor shot that uh, went out and didn't do much of anything. Yeah. Now, but going into just Blink Disruptor here, maybe you get a few lucky shots, and you're playing against a lot of Vikings, so that kind of equalizes it in some ways. Yeah, it's definitely a good unit comp to have coming up against this, but yeah. we'll have to see how good Keen's splitting is. There's also a lot of area to cover here for Keen. Uh, I'm sorry, for Creator. So mm -hmm. Keen can hit in a lot of different locations. Is that a Viking hit squad that's on the ground? You better believe it, Artosis. Right. Let's, I want right. to see. I want to see the Viking uh, hit squad run by as they yeah. run into the main and try to kill probes. Seriously. Okay, so that base is taken down. Oh yeah. Now look at how bad Vikings oh are. They're, they're, they're like stuck behind each other. Like, like, okay, no never mind. Took half of the shields off that. Half the Vikings literally running in the back trying to find yeah. the right location to then hit that. All right. So a good drop in the main base. Very very marauder heavy. One thing about this as well is that when you're dropping like this, the drop this excuse me, the disruptor shots cannot uh, go up the high ground. So you're actually getting to pick a lot more fights that you would normally go much worse for you as a Protoss. Yeah. Couple disruptors out in the middle here. Okay. Oh, I think we might be getting close it. to the yeah. finisher here. GG, Keen takes game one versus Creator. And he played really well. Creator started out with the pretty nice opening overall, was defending well, but Keen's multitasking was on point. He was expanding behind it. He kept up with his upgrades the entire time. He did some beautiful tactical moves where it was like, chase this, now chase this, now I kill that. It was awesome. King's Cove, more like Keen's Cove, Artosis. Could have sworn that joke's been made before. No, uh, I think it's the first one. Certainly. It was going to happen eventually, though. Well, he, he definitely played very, very well there. You know what I like about these upsets that we're seeing right now? Is it's not like last season where, you know, it's like, oh, this sharp timing killed him. He's out. Look at that. But, like, Keen and Creator are both playing very well today. This is nice. Yeah. This is I refreshing. Mean, Creator was actually winning that for a little bit. I think he just had a pretty uh, catastrophic attack there when he was trying to hit the fourth. But, yeah, I mean, these guys are both killing it. 
Uh, we're going to Thunderbird for game two. Right now, Keen with a 1-0 lead. The Linner, the win, the Linner. But you guys get it. Round of 16. The guy that wins goes on. Africa S2, Keen. Jen Air Greenways, Creator. All right. Thunderbird, another really big macro map. I'm happy. I'm really happy with the results so far, so far today. This has been so cool to see these guys, both of them, mm -hmm. big upsets. And as they're facing off head-to-head, -head, more evidence it wasn't a fluke or just a weird game. They're having a great uh, yeah. game one. It's you not know? like they're stepping on rakes the entire time. Right, they're making yeah. some very good moves. Slipping on banana peels and sitting down on benches that say wet paint. Yeah. All right, quick scout here. Just making the nexus behind. Interested to see what Creator's tech path is going to be as opposed to Keen's. Why is that? Well, he went for the Stargate opener, and he was extremely defensive with it. Like, extremely defensive, right? He, right. he went three Oracles, didn't really do very much harassment yet. We saw it a little tiny bit, but uh, just kind of set the stasis words and everything, right? Is that is that going to be his style here? Is he going to, again, go for a more defensive macro game? This is maybe even a better map for it than King's Cove, really, right? You know, what's funny about it as well is that um, it doesn't seem to look like uh, what the other Gen Air players do. You know what I mean? I, you know, We talk yeah. a lot of times when we're talking to, about Gen Air specifically because they're so dominant as a StarCraft II team that, you know, when you're looking at someone like Trap or Maru or, you know, any of those guys, you have to factor in the rest of their teammates as well because when you're on a team like that and the way that team operates... Um, it's a collective brain in a lot of senses, right? They're all sharing ideas um, and training together and helping each other out where, you know, it's very different from some of these players where it really truly is a one-man army with occasional assistance from uh, fellow rivals. Yeah. So uh, to see Creator come from that team but actually deliver a very unique opening of his own mm -hmm. uh, in this is very exciting because it means maybe Keen's finding more of his own way here as well. It didn't look like it was a carbon copy of, like, Trap, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Keen here going for a very fast third command off of literally just a reactor barracks. So, going to play a very macro-intensive heavy game. Uh, creator, over on the other hand, Robo into Twilight, just kind of normal, normal stuff. Doesn't feel like he's going to be able to punish anything. Oh, never mind. Okay, so we're actually going to see DT now. He's blindly making turrets because he was doing such a greedy build, right? Yeah. If they go Oracle and you've done this build and you don't make the turrets, you're just going to lose. So one funny concept that's actually happening here is because there's turrets there, I guess that, that helps against ETs. It might, we'll see how the execution goes. Yeah. It might outright stop it. But these turrets are not necessarily there to stop DTs. Yeah, no, so absolutely. That's, that's an anti-Oracle turret yes, in the main. exactly. So what's funny about this is that in some way, Keen is safe, he's fine, mm -hmm. but for the wrong reasons, but that's going to be okay anyways. Yeah, but look at how many gates and charge on the way. It seems like he's probably going to use Jim's build, which uh, we saw we saw fail recently um, from Party. Oh, let's use the DTs as well. Yeah, that's, that's pretty big right there. So can he actually hold on after scouting that? He's starting to add bunkers, which is probably the right thing to do. I think he should be throwing up some missile turrets too, to be honest, because uh, the way that this strategy goes, and again, it, uh, Parting ended up winning a game last season with it. Uh, it was given to him by Jim, and then he used it again this season. I believe it was Parting that used it, and it went terribly wrongly and, and, and lost. Uh, but what you do is you have two prisms, and you fly in, and you you can utilize like Archon and Charge and a lot of gateways and just kind of bludgeon your opponent. It, it works surprisingly well. 
Maybe he's like third nexus. Maybe because it got scouted, he's canceling. Look at that. He's getting everything at once. Yeah, the game has been pulled in a lot of different directions. So he's got the two DTs there. He picked him up. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He did make an Archon. Yeah, I wonder, is he still going to do this? I don't know about this anymore, He's actually Artosis. getting a good scout. Yeah, with all the bunkers? Yeah, Look at I that. Mean, He's got the, four bunkers. The bunker is the easiest way to identify that this probably isn't going to just yeah. work, right? Well, I mean, if it just kills the bunkers, that's... What are you... Terran is actually happy to lose bunkers if they don't lose anything else. Absolutely. They want you to attack them in bunkers. Because they made the right decision making. Oh, oh my god. Oh. My God! Oh man, Crater's, like, Crater's face when that happened. He looked like he tried. He looked like he ate his lips. Yeah. When that happened, he did look like he ate his lips. Okay. So, anyways, the whole build that I was talking about is not being pulled off at this point. Uh, he, it seems like he just canceled it when it got scanned yeah. so perfectly. Which I think, I mean, it makes sense. It was kind of sad to see the execution of an Archon. Uh, thinking he was playing against a Zerg player and then dying to Marines like that, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was trying to get a little bit of extra damage. In all seriousness, he was trying to get a little bit more hurt out there and then uh, go back into a macro game. Uh, he's still got the two War Prisms out on the map, sure. so he can try to come up here to 12 o'clock and then slip into the main. I mean, there are Marines out on the map here for Keen. Keen may be behaving more liberally than he should. Yeah, you can still get some damage done with this. It's just not the dangerous all-in that it was before. Oh, he actually canceled charge even. That's crazy. Oh, I didn't see you don't that. See that good, every good day. patch, Artosis. That's something I was not looking for, but yeah, you're right. As the zealots are moving around here, <laughs> yeah. So this is just slow zealots. This is definitely a, a very huge uh, change that he did once it got scouted, which I, I applaud him for. Not many players are willing to change their build order, their strategy that much upon something as simple as a scan. That seems like a good choice. Like, he's, you know, he's doing a little bit. He's harassing a little bit. I guess the slow zealots do, do still get in the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, now we've got a medevac drop coming in here. And let's see if this does anything. Because Terran's finally having some moments where they can do uh, some of their own plays here on the map. This is just Envision a Creator. The Creator, yep, he reacts. Just blink forward there. Oh, oh. My. Gets out. Three yep. more medevacs on the way. Yeah, and this might be headed towards the natural, although it could end up coming over the fourth base, incidentally. I like that he kind of chased over in that direction, seeing if he could get that Archon hit to finish it off. Keep in mind, with some of these drop plays like this, he might force a recall somewhere, and then you can win with a drop elsewhere on the map. Oh! Okay, one medevac shot right out of the sky. Bumpy game as far as drops go for both of these players. The stim is coming down now on this Nexus, but the presence of the DT drives that away. A drop comes in over here, but one blink, and he should be able to take that medevac out. He does. Keen losing on so many fronts here. Yeah, he's not really getting any damage done at the moment. Still trying, but it seems like Creator is just defending every single angle. Well... The fourth comes down for Creator. I mean, Creator's winning the fights. It was a, a very unusual game. We had lots of canceled tech. Um, kind of, this is an example in Creator's case of somebody who's really intuiting how to navigate this game step by step, even if execution has been a little bit off. Mm -hmm. Even having the understanding of, okay, we'll get a few slow zealots in here that at least sort of gets in the way. It makes enough of a headache for the Terran. Yeah. Um, then I can slow down this third. And from here, it appears though, we might have a push from uh, Keen, or maybe even just multiple drops. But I, I'm getting worried for the guy here, because I think we're going to have Creator push up here. Now, yeah, this drop over yeah. here, is there any way to salvage this? It appears not. No, it, he's going to let that one go, and I think that that's actually fine, because his army, his standing army right now, is ridiculously strong. This uh, exemplifies how drop is such a double-edged sword. You can be dropping and hitting a lot of locations, but if you're losing chunks of that army, eventually the counterattack is an inevitability. Yeah, especially in a situation like this. He's finishing up 2-2. I feel like this draw, this attack just wins the game. Like, even with this, it looks like Keen wants to do a base trade, which is probably his best bet, is to try to hold his main and base trade, 
But I don't think that does anything. Okay, immediately guns down the command center so you can't have anything. Any shenanigans with that. But this is a sizable army. I think you're right, Artosis. Creator uh, should win this, but let's see what uh, let's see what King can do with this. Yeah, he needs to force a recall to live through it in his main base, but I don't know how quickly he can really do that. He's yeah. got very few scans. There's DT tech out, which is amazing well, in base trades. Taking out both those command centers as well. The main is generally the one that's least likely to have the energy, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, he's going to come up here, and that should be the beginning of the end. I mean, there's no way to recover. He can eventually, after he's decimated all the infrastructure, he's already gotten rid of the expansions, he can go ahead and come back home and just save this. And then, yeah. you know, it's it's pretty easy, to be honest, for the Protoss to then just make a Nexus and sit back and turtle and wait. Eventually, this becomes a victory. Well, the uh, Nexus goes down. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, if he kills all the probes, it's a draw. Well, he's going to get this last CC. Okay, there's plenty of probes, though. But are there? <laughs> Too bad. That would have been an amazing couple mine hits on the right, right probe stack. But he's got enough money for a Nexus, so that's, that's just kind of... That's the most important factor here. Yeah. Now, it always gets a little bit trickier on both sides as far as who has what when you're actually playing in the game. Keen's got our, so few buildings left. Oh. Our omnipotence with having an observer here actually helps out a lot and us mm -hmm. being able to track this, but when you're in these moments, there's so many moving parts. So I, Keen should basically be dead. He doesn't, of course, know how many minerals are there. I can't believe he made the Nexus right there. All right. I think he might have just instamated it so he doesn't get revealed, maybe? Oh, maybe you're right. So yeah, he had, he had enough for multiple Nexuses. Okay, that one's forced to cancel. Mm -hmm. That does put him... He doesn't know if another one's being made. I think he probably assumes that it is. Well, he has to if he doesn't have vision yet. Well, it does take a little bit yeah. of time. He's getting all these probes mowed down. So wait, what is that? He has 20, uh, okay, 17 workers remaining. There's zero, there's zilch here for Keen. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, even if he were to get that Nexus, uh, he has enough money for another Nexus. <laughs> like, yeah, Creator just has a big bank here, which so, makes it very tough. In, in, in a sense, we're almost waiting for Keen to kind of get a, a handle of the situation. He's still roaming the map. Um, and yeah, I mean, these 17 workers are just going to start mining. Protoss doesn't really have to do anything. First of all, Protoss can't get to the floating buildings right now in that center left yeah. location. So you're basically just going to wait and try to build up to something. Mm -hmm. And here we may, in fact, see him GG. Yeah, he's, well, I think you're supposed to suicide on the Nexus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But of course, with those extra minerals, another Nexus was a possibility. Good yeah. win there by Creator. I really love that. Yeah, very well done. Uh, that was just a very strong play from him. Keen made the best of a bad situation. If Creator uh, had, you know, just spent all of his money instantly, that could have been a draw. So, good thing he had that bank there. It's really what saved him. Another great series. Yeah. With our two initially underdogs, mm -hmm. now really showing why they were able to both beat these players we initially perceived to be so much stronger than them. Yeah, and now we're going to go into Acropolis as our map three. Not really sure who's going to be able to take this one. Seems uh, relatively evenly matched. Keen overdoing it a little bit with the uh, aggression there. You know, Creator, I've just been informed, by the way, Creator wants to take a short break, which we do allow for. Kind of a crazy moment for these two. Yeah. In a group that, to be frank, I wasn't uh, as excited about mm -hmm. as, you know, some of the other groups we have here. Um, and now this is proving to be one of the groups with the best games and um, some of the craziest stories, really. So in that last game... I thought Creator, he was in an odd spot, right? Because he was doing an unusual build, and it was scanned. And the scan was perfect enough that yeah. it, you basically could uh, identify what was coming. And so he was faced with a tough situation. Do you go ahead and go with the strategy anyways? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, that's a big mistake. And so yeah. with an already unusual build, he has to try to then uh, shift gears and go into a different direction and play an unusual uh a little bit of a harass, but mostly just a macro tech game. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it was a little bit bumpy, but he eventually was managing to get into a very good spot. Unfortunately, Keen attacks in so much, and in some of those moments, even if he's killing off workers or a nexus, he's also losing the medevacs, yeah. the marauders, the marines, and 
it can be deceptive when you're watching because you're seeing a Protoss get owned all over the place. But then when you look at army supply, suddenly there's all these Colossi, um, you know, every tier one unit pushing forward here and tearing through. And Keen just did not have enough to ever win in a base trade. Well, it seemed like the same decisive moment as on King's Cove where Keen yeah. starts hitting everywhere at once and either it works out or it doesn't work out. It yeah. worked out on King's Cove. It started not working out, but then he started getting the damage everywhere and you know, killed a bunch of expensive units, killed a bunch of probes, uh, got rid of a Nexus, but he didn't find that on Thunderbird. So when you don't find that and Crater's been hitting his build the whole time, Macron the whole time, 2-2 two, two with that type of army, you can just roll through them. I am happy with either of these players moving on. Yeah. I mean, this is they're both looking great. Um, it's like they're both new iterations of themselves. And uh, I guess we're going to find that out. I think we're about to jump back into game three. Close the series out. It'll be on Acropolis. Keen 2.0, Creator 2.0. They've both been patched, Artosis. Yeah. These yeah. are the new strong units in StarCraft 2. Good thing, too. Because Keen 1.5 and Creator 1.5. Round of 32, guys. Yeah, for a little bit, Keen was a scout yeah. of uh, all the units in the game, but now he's looking very strong. Let's go to game Point. three now. Nazi Keen and Creator in the patch notes, but okay. Stealth patch. Afrika S2, Keen. Jin Air Green Wings, Creator. This is definitely another map that can give us a big macro game, too. It's very interesting to see the vetoes change over time. Now, uh, we've been seeing all three of these maps, especially King's Cove and Thunderbird, a lot. It's been nice. Yeah, I, I like I to get into some macro games after so much aggression for a season and a half or so. Yeah, there was a <laughs> period of time where it actually got weird if we got to, you know, 20 minutes into a game. Mm -hmm. Felt unnatural because there was so much action going on. So we've got the Nexus coming down here for Protoss. The probe is staying behind here. Looks to block off the command center. He's being as annoying as he can be. Or is it not to? Thanks. Oh, nice block. Continuing on. I mean, we got to wait a little bit, see what Protoss is going to do. How are you doing today, Artosis? This is a slow okay. build here for this game. Yeah. Slow openings for the time being. Um, no, I'm, I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to be back casting. Yeah, well, we got plenty of that. We have a lot of casting ASL coming up here. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Two days after that, we fly to China. Some WCG action. It's going to be fun. That's where it all started for Young Tasteless. Did you know that? Actually, you knew did. that. Of course, you knew that. Yeah, I was there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is uh, cool that that tournament is back. Oh, absolutely. Excited about it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the, thanks for joining us, guys, here on this uh, Saturday afternoon of GSL Code S. If you're just now tuning in, this has been just such a crazy group with uh, two major upsets of classic and innovation and losers. <laughs> I know, it's so weird. I mean, I don't know what to say. <laughs> no. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. I'm actually very curious to see. Let's say that both Keen and Creator actually move on. We know at least one will. How well will they perform against these other players? Because Innovation and Classic are like top, 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 top tier players. Yeah. So, and if they move on to the round of 16, the, during the group selection ceremony, they're likely both to be picked up first and second. Yeah. Which is really funny because they just, the, the respect won't catch up with the skill. You know, exactly. it takes a while. Yeah. And well, people I mean, will view them as the weakest players in the next round, and almost then, certainly. And then if they move on from there, it's going to get really crazy. If one of these guys makes a round of eight, that is, then we got to re-ask that question, what's your career-defining moment? <laughs> you know, right? 
Okay, a little bit of attack in here from Keen, softening up some of these adepts. Somehow. Yeah, decent micro from Creator, I want to say, but Keen's micro is out of control. You see that? I know. That was it the was greatest, ridiculous. craziest micro I've On ever seen. On both sides. You almost have to zoom your screen out to micro like that. That was really fantastically done. And Creator dealt with it pretty well also. Again, both of them showing that they're playing well today. Yeah, in top form here. Oracle's about to be out on the map now. And is, it looks like Creator is almost, he's got a probe at his third already. Yeah, that's a little bit. Yeah, okay, he's gonna yeah. do it. He makes a third Nexus right away. Yeah, that's pretty good with Oracle. Normally you can mm -hmm. pin him in their base for a little bit and you should be able to hit your gateway explosion before any normal timings. But yeah, and it's, this is all, of course, reliant on the fact that the Oracle is able to keep the Terran feeling threatened. Yeah. Because yeah. if this, or let's say this Oracle just dies, uh, totally different game here. Uh, it's also why we see multiple oracles being made. Yeah, it's just some light harassment, but has to make it live, has to get it out. I wonder what this is with Keen, by the way, because his two racks is, you know, reasonably quick. He's oh my god. Oh my god. Oh quickly. my god! Takes the oracle out. Was that Oracle a close friend of yours? <laughs> <laughs> that was my best friend. Ori the Oracle. Yeah. Um, poor Ori. Rip. Now, Stim's coming. Again, the Oracle's not just there to, to do damage to the uh, SVs of the expansion, but also to try to kill off workers. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, not to try, try to kill off uh, attacking units as well here. So, you know, you're taking three bases here. Stim's on the way. Um, uh, cyclones are out. You see, Creator's a little bit scared. Like, he built yeah, the well, two shield be. batteries at his third. Well, this is what I was wondering. Is, is, is Terran going to try to come and strike back here? Mm. He cancels one, so he's starting to doubt his uh, read there. From here, Blink's on the way. We got more gateways coming down. Yeah, and I, I definitely think that uh, Keen is gearing up to move out. Definitely feels that way. Okay, going to start sending his units out here. Decent amount of Marines. No combat shields at the moment. Obviously, right. you got to have Stim finish up here first. And here's the moment Terran tries to come out. Now, what's in the main here? It looks like absolutely nothing. Yeah, I don't think he has a mine or anything here, so... Yeah, I don't see this it. This is pretty huge. So, so... <coughs> well, uh, he actually has five Excuse SCVs, me. but hold on. These Hellions running by into the main base is pretty big. Don't forget he has his other force coming, so if you send too many units up here to deal with this... Oh, he has Phoenixes. Never mind. Okay, he scans. This is fine. Locks on to that. And, I mean, he has Stim. These gateway yeah. units are going to have a hard time, even with the shield battery. Uh, the Oracles are coming in. It might be a little bit late, though. And one Oracle goes down. The other one could be picked off. Mm. He's going to back off. Keep in mind, Blink is not far away from uh, being a major factor here. Yeah, that's really, really true. Very back and forth so far. Both sides having some really nice moves, some, some good harassments when their opponents are out of position. This has been such an awesome series. Yeah, it's really good. So we have a pickup over here. Blink is close to being done. Is he going to combo this with the rest of the army over there? I don't think so. I think this is one of the ones where you're trying to get him out of position, right? Okay. That's 10 Marines. It's, it's kind of a funny amount. I think he's going to go to the main and hit the third at the same time here. I guess the moment that you see the two medevacs, you might assume they're full as well. Yeah. And uh, actually overestimate the, the, the power of this drop. But he's going to drop it out of vision. OK, so it's actually the reverse. He wants to draw attention over mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and then do damage in the main. I thought it was going to be a flip of that. We're going to have to see a recall if he wants to save these probes. Oh, this is brutal. Okay, no recall yet. And now another attack in over here, taking out a total of nine probes so far. Everything going wrong right now for Creator. Blinks forward. He wants to deal with this completely, but what's happening in the main base? Uh, I don't know, Artosis. We haven't seen yet. There it is. All right, so that was cleaned up. Yeah, but nine probes? Yeah. Now, remember, uh, we saw in, in the other game, it was a similar situation, at least for starts, where Keen was doing drops everywhere, mm -hmm. killing a lot of stuff off, and then the counterattack comes in mm -hmm. <laughs> from Crater. So we want to watch out for that as well. Yeah, he doesn't have great upgrades or anything. It's one, plus one against plus one, and he only has Blink. Uh, charge is on the way, though. I believe we have a big Widow Mine drop moving out right now from Keen. So this, this kind of counter drop, if he holds on against this push, could give him a giant lead. So he'll hold that for now. Charge. It's going to be a big factor here in these fights. There's that drop once more. Uh, okay, he actually pocketed one of those. He's going to try to drop this one up here. Let's yeah. see if he's watching. Well, look at that. This is a lot of lost mining time, if nothing else. 
Ends up killing four probes. <gasps> oh! oh! Hey, you know, that's what you're looking for with a drop like that, is one of those moments. Wow. Yeah, really worthwhile. The counterattack hasn't anything. He's sending out another two medevacs. Creator's got to get something done with these stalkers, but I can't see it. Can't see it happening. Looks like Creator has plans of his own to do a big warp in here in the main. Was there ever any defense put in here since those oracles came in? It doesn't look like there's that much. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, no, it's it's just the units that are spawning out of this. Uh, uh, the, the the barracks is here. Got some very annoying stuff here. Uh, the two phoenixes do find that medevac. Creator starting to get Dude, some damage here and there. These, these guys are so crazy in, in some of the plays we're seeing here. Uh, he had a very nice attack in there. I think he might have wanted to stay a little bit longer, but instead he's going to recall back home with Stalkers and Immortals coming in here to try to drive this away. Another big mine hit, though. Meanwhile, back in the Terrence base, 15 SCVs have already been killed. It looks like that attack has finally been mopped up. Oh, my oh God. Oh, no. He's going to lose Storm. More probes, lost mining time. Psy Storm in the Temple Archives going down. Keen playing just a beautiful game Oh, here. my God. Denies ground armor as well. Are you kidding me? That's so, insanely strong. I was mentioning. Oh my god! Yeah, I was mentioning that zealots with charge are, you know, very important here and trying to hold off some of these fights because they get yeah. you sustained. But now they're going uh, to be, yeah, they're going to be squishier. They're going to run up faster and then die faster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Keen doing a great job. Now he has to be careful not to overextend. If he loses a big army like this. I mean, that's where Creator starts to really come back with this reinforcement. Beautiful. Now he does have that advantage. Should be able to take that army out. Not even a sentry in there. We're talking basic right now. In coming forward again. Does he pick up and dive into the main? I can imagine a situation where Protoss sets up. And then we see an instant drop over there. But so far... Nothing of the sort. Instead, he's actually parading more units forward. He might want to just battering ram through here. All right. Uh, this is looking real good for Keen right now. We're going to have to have yeah. some magnificent storms, and he's going to have to buy time before that can even happen. Making yeah. an Archon, you can see he doesn't have a lot of faith. Here comes Keen. Look at that. He scares him back. Storm storm's is still done. so far Ooh. out. Yeah. But I guess the math might be a little bit fuzzy here mm -hmm. for, uh, for Keen here. He's realized now that it is not ready, but Psystorm is coming. He's willing down so much of the army before it's there, though. Okay, there it is. I feel like it might be too little too late. More and more Terran reinforcements coming across the map right now. Yeah, as long as he can continue to run back from those storms, I think he might win this tug of war here. There's more reinforcements coming up as well. Again, the real units here, well, I was going to say it was an Archon and Immortal, now just an Immortal. Yeah, Keen just breaking through absolutely everything. No chance left for Creator. GG is GG. called, and Keen wins a group with Innovation and Classic in it. Get those Keen means ready. Wow. What a great uh, day so far. Uh, it's, it's exciting. I'll, I'll tell you what, though. I'd be a little bit nervous if I'm Creator. He was so close to getting out. I yeah. Mean, he, he, he's looking great. Well, but whoever see. comes up, like, yeah. Keen just played a great TVP series, right? So Creator shows he can play pretty toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Right. And then if Classic beats Innovation, which wouldn't be a surprise to anyone, I mean, he already beat him PVP 2-0. Yeah. He already kind of outplayed him there. Creator has a real chance to get out of here as well. We're going to go to an interview with Kane and see how he's feeling in a group that was so much against him as far as odds. He's managed to be the first to move on from this group and go on to the round of 16. So crazy. Uh, and this interview will be translated by Andy, and we'll be going to that now. Hello, guys. We have our first winner of Group F round of 32. It is Kane. Congratulations. Thank you. This is your last season of the year, and you made it to the round of 16. How do you feel? Well, first of all, you know, I thought I would make it out as a second place if I, if I win, but I'm really happy. Well, you look very determined today. 
and your first place today. You might have also predicted the four wins today. Well, until the first set, it was ha I was happy. And then I knew that if I win another set, I could win. But then I lost one more set. So I was a little scared at the 1-1 one, one moment. In the third set, you opted for the same strategy and then you did gain the win. No, I played against creator kind of, kind of a lot in the online games. And then I um, exploited its weaknesses. In the third set, I was kind of hesitant, but then I decided to play passive and safe, so I just opted for the strategy that I prepared. And that's why I opted for the strategy. And you know, you were really good at the skirmishes today. And every skirmish, you um, took the upper hand. And your interference metrics was like today pinpoint, pinpoint accuracy. And then you were able to gain the big win and move into the round of 16. And it felt like your condition was really good today. Were you satisfied with your performance today? Well, against innovation, I'm kind of scared playing against him. And I see that innovation is a very aggressive player, so I took that into salt and I prepared a strategy just for him. And when Maru was on his honor roll with his four consecutive championships, you were known to be very good at macro. I have confidence in TVT, but you know. It's, it's only against innovation that I feel a little bit scared. In new repugnancy, you know, innovation has gathered a lot of resources for the late game, but before he can do anything else, you went for the surprise attack and then you did gain the win. Well, I just waited for innovation to pull off a three Raven play. And he did, and then I think that's when um, he kind of got tilted. Oh, I was talking about the first set. Oh, okay. You know, in the first set, the resources um, discrepancy was quite large, but you did overcome it. In terms of bionic versus mechanic, bionic tend to um, get more like expansions. And mechanic tend to be stronger in ground fights. So I didn't take too much into consideration and I was just focusing on how to expand as efficient as possible. Right, that was a TVT matchup. At last, you did come first place after winning the winner's match. And your TVP matchup has been known to has known to be not the, not too good. And uh, was there any improvement in that? Well, regardless of patch, I was I was really you know I was really bad at TVP, and I practiced a lot. But you know, coming in today, I prepared for TVP the most, and I think it worked out really well. <laughs> well, you know, I wouldn't say I improved. I would say that I got a little bit better. And it's your round of 16 in a long time. Any last words? Well, coming today, you know, I came here with the determination to move into round of 16, no matter what. <laughs> and this season, my goal is to win the whole thing. Once again, congratulations on your advancement. Thank you. Sweet. He moves on. I'm going to have my eye on him. I think we all will. Yeah, as he goes on. I think he's going to get picked up first in the round of 16, but I think so. I think he's yeah. more dangerous than that, so... Yeah, I can't think of someone else who would be picked over him. A lot of these players still uh, underestimate him. I know I did as a caster coming into this. Um, by the way, if you're in the audience, please hang on to your tickets. We have a giveaway at the end of the show. We're giving away photo book. You can scarf. do it. So a scarf is the one I always forget. 
and some other stuff. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, uh, our losers match. Do not go away.